Well, anyway, welcome to the school council. Uh, thank you for your participation. Uh, basically, we're going to go around and introduce ourselves. Uh, my name is Robert Watt, the career and technical principal. Michael Watson, academic principal. John Hoyle, culinary arts teacher. Mike Vieira, network administrator. Uh, Matt Mitchell, math teacher. Scott Atkinson, science teacher. I am Rochelle Porchado, freshman parent representative. Linda Garris, junior parent representative. Tim Perry, junior and senior representative. Uh, Daniel Perry, student representative. Okay. Yeah, thank you. It's a very small group, so uh, there probably won't be a lot of dialogue back and forth, unfortunately. Um, we said I'm first, so I don't. I wasn't having much to say. I know I was going to let Mr. Watson. Did you speak to one of these before? I did uh, not. Yeah. So, so this is our new academic principal, Mr. Watson. <coughs> he just started this year. This is his first meeting, so we're letting him have. It. Sure. Okay. So there's a few items that are on the agenda that we thought we could discuss and answer any questions about. Some of which are new initiatives to the school, and things that we're hoping to uh, address. If there are questions, please feel free to stop me at any time and we can, uh, we can discuss them. The first is the virtual high school. This is an arrangement that the district entered into in August with virtual high school VHS, a company that provides online course offerings to students. Uh, we had several students that were on an accelerated math program when they entered uh, in their freshman year. Uh, so these pro this program is the, is the venue with which we're choosing to use to uh, provide AP calculus the students, we have one student who's also taking AP Chemistry, and we have a student who was originally part of that Accelerated Math program that's now taking a, a number theory course. Uh, this is a pilot program for us this year, and a program that we, we're utilizing for students who are on that Accelerated Math class that we hope to see uh, expounded upon in the coming years to address not only math credits and math opportunities, but foreign language opportunities and other areas where students may be able to take courses to broaden their opportunities for acceptance at the Mass Public Colleges and Universities. So it's an exciting time for us uh, to get this kind of off the ground. Uh, we are also exploring opportunities to have some of our staff members trained uh, as virtual instructors uh, for the possibility down the road that they may be used for part of their teaching schedule to, to instruct virtual courses. Uh, that's kind of a dual uh, benefit for us. Not only does the uh, instructor get the opportunity to teach an online class with students really across the globe, but it comes with a financial benefit to the district as well. Uh, when you provide teacher access to virtual high school, the rate in which the district has to pay for virtual classes drops substantially. And so as the need increases over the coming years, we anticipate uh, this is an opportunity we want to explore to be able to make sure virtual high school offerings are more accessible for more of our students throughout the curriculum. So we're in the very early stages of this. Uh, the pilot has gone very well, I think, for the first month of school. The program is excellent as uh, work is submitted by our students, the seven students who are enrolled there. Uh, our VHS coordinator, who is uh, Mr. Helder Angelo, who is our curriculum director, is notified of assignment submissions and also of monthly up updates for grades. So we're kept very well informed and the Angelo is kept me informed uh, of student grades along the way. Our students have done very well in the first weeks of this class. It's exciting for us and we're going to continue to look at opportunities to grow this program in uh, the weeks and months and years ahead. Does anyone have any questions on virtual high school? Danny, do you want to speak? Danny, Danny on very spot, but He's one of the students that's enrolled in, in the AP calculus course. Um, so what would you like me to well, talk about your experience? So, how it is. so it's a very unique experience as I've taken a few other online courses in the past, but those have all been automated. They're regulated by a computer system, and this is a unique program as there's actually another teacher on the other end who communicates back and forth and corrects assignments and gives assignments and it's very interesting and has a lot of potential. So it's, it's more natural more yes. than a regular online blackboard course. Yes. So great, good. Glad you enjoyed One of the things that to add and the end triggered my mind as he was talking, one of the things that we're looking to add is in many colleges and universities this has become more and more part of the curriculum. So uh, it's exciting to be on kind of the cutting edge of this in high schools, uh, to be able to offer those opportunities to students uh, in a way that not only we have face-to-face -face instruction, which is traditional in many high school settings, but be able to expound those opportunities to students who are eager to do so through the online network. So 
thank you again. I'm very excited to, uh, to take part in this. Okay, item B is the makeup policy. Uh, the school committee at the September uh, 13th meeting approved an adjustment or amendment to the student makeup policy, which was put in place in the student handbook in the spring. The amendment is, is basically that all students will have the opportunity to revise an assignment uh, for uh, additional credit. Once the student's grade come, when the student receives a grade in the first go around, if the student is unsatisfied with that score, he or she will be able to make up that assignment one time to have the scores average together to create a new score, a new, a new point value. The only caveat to that is if a student were to say receive a 40 on the first test and come back and get a, an 80 on the second test, the student cannot receive a grade lower than 65 if the student demonstrated competence. Obviously 80 plus 40 is 120 divided by two is 60. The teacher will have to adjust that grade from 60 to 65 because the student demonstrated competence or proficiency by passing the, the uh, assignment for exam. That was the only adjustment. Right. And, uh, basically, that's what we want to know, is that they've learned, they didn't do well here, but they learned enough to get to the 80. They're still punished, but they're not failing. Right. So. Obviously, we want to encourage students to prepare for all assignments, tests and quizzes as we go through it, but we want to also provide that opportunity for students, uh, given various issues that may arise in their lives, they have the opportunity assess and master the content. That's the objective of the school, is to provide the venue for students to demonstrate content mastery. Uh, so that, that's the rationale for the adjustment. Also, students who are out of school and sick, uh, there was some confusion with the excused and unexcused absences in the original policy change. So this gives all students the opportunity to earn a full credit grade on their first attempt on the assignment. Any questions on the amended makeup policy? It is also posted on the district website for the time being because it was a change from the student handbook that was sent out this summer. Staff, no? Yeah. C, uh, this is another exciting, uh, I think it's exciting anyway. The district has contracted out to move with online student applications. Uh, one of the challenges in the career vocational technical environment is making sure that all students within our district who reside in Dartmouth, Fairhaven, or New Bedford understand what their options are for continuing their education in high school. Uh, so what we've done is contracted with a, with a firm to help with the online application process. What that process will do is allow the district to interface directly online with students who reside in our community. Students, parents will be able to uh, create login credentials and begin the application process directly with the district. Their respective counselors in those districts will be notified uh, when the appropriate time comes for submission of materials to grade and revenue vote tech. Uh, what this does is creates that, as I mentioned, unique relationship between the prospective student and grade and revenue vote tech, rather than having to, to move all those resources through the, the, uh, the district guidance councils. And in defense of the district guidance councils, the Haven, Dartmouth, and New Bedford, you know, that can be a pretty overwhelming task to have to compile all those documents for submission at the same time. So this allows us the opportunity to, to have students express interest in Greater New Bedford Vote Tech and to begin that process on their own uh, online. We envision that this will take probably two to three years for the district to go 100% online. It's likely we're definitely going to continue to accept paper applications and into some of those things in manually. Uh, but we're going to be encouraging prospective middle school parents at our open house and during the fall uh, when they come here to, to take part in that system online as a means to establish a relationship with the district. The other piece I'll mention, it's not on the agenda, but we've also uh, contracted, we're, we're going to uh, begin to expand our search for instructors in the future. Uh, we are now moving uh, to a more automated application process for teachers. So it's kind of a dual purpose. Not only moving forward with online student applications, we're gonna be on moving forward with online teacher recruitment through school spring and other uh, venue sources called Talent and Recruit Ed. Recruit right. Talent Ed. Uh, so we're going to get our we're going to get our message out there and try to seek and, 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 and recruit the, the highest quality instructors we can in both our career and technical areas and our academic programs. And I think we'll get a more diverse workforce that way. Yeah. And I think you know, we want to attract the best people to the school. And so those those two initiatives are both ongoing at the moment. We anticipate being online with both of those in the coming weeks. Uh, in some cases, days. Uh, Dr. Larkin, who's the head of guidance met with me this morning and we are very close to going ready to be live with the online student application. I anticipate that will be uh, within the next week or two. 
right? And I, I think you explained that the difference is now we're not waiting for the district to give the stuff to us so we can go over and rate the student. They're going to come to us. We know they have an interest. Now the Senate district has to send this. Cable court, uh, 114. So it's actually back in the court, 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 court. We were at their mercy. Now they have the ones that apply and they show interest here. The Senate district has to give us their information. So, uh, the nice part too about the uh, the system is it will you know as many of you know and I'm sure folks in the community who may watch this know we, we had over 900 applications last year and accepted 565 students. This database will allow us to maintain those records for an extended period of time so that when these students graduate who are not admitted to New Bedford Folk Tech from Fairhaven, New Bedford, or Dartmouth High School but may have an interest at 18 or 19 years old in a Chapter 74 program. It will allow Greater New Bedford Folk Tech to reach out to those students to be able to offer them those types of certifications through our adult education program. And so we're hopeful that this program will not only allow us to establish those relationships for high school experiences, but make sure members of the community are aware of the opportunities that exist in, in career and technical education beyond high school through our adult education program. So it's exciting, it's an exciting program, and, and we're really excited to get this launched. Any questions on either of the online programs? Okay, item D is upgrades to the book. Which I just noticed. So here we go. Um, B or Mr. Watt. Right. So we, uh, this summer, we actually got a computer lab for our engineering group. It's taken quite a few years, but we're excited about that. One of the shops that really need a computer lab would be uh, the engineering part with all their robots and stuff like that. So. It's almost completely done. It's brand new and state-of-the-art computers, so we're excited about that. Um, and the coffee shop is also going through a mini renovation. Uh, we have a new point-of-sale system, which is what they use almost in every restaurant. Um, they, they put the order in, it goes right into the kitchen, and then it's all automated. That's very important to do so that you know what to do when you go out in the public, but also we also like them to take orders the old fashioned way so that they know that they have to write legibly, they have to communicate in the back how to take orders. So we're going to go give both directions to our students. They're gonna do the handwritten and also point of sales. Point of sales um, being part of the computer and the software will let us track all our inventory at the same time. There's many benefits to that. So we did get a point of sale system. We put in a new rug. We're going to have the booths put in and uh, just give it a facelift. It's been a long time since we've done any work in that area. So pretty happy with that. Other than that, most of our areas have already been updated. We're state of the art in just about every shop here. So those were the two lagging and we're coming along quite nicely right now. I would just add, Mr. Watt, Mr. O'Brien, and myself have had a number of conversations around capital investment in the school. And it's a high priority of the administration to make sure that we continue to have the best equipment that's available to educate kids in our career and technical areas as well as our academic programs. So it's something we're very cognizant of as we go to build that budget in the years ahead. Uh, it's it's going to remain a, a strong focal point in the district. Right, and our advisory boards are crucial to that because they um, advise us on industry standards and equipment that we should have that is used out in the industry. And uh, when we apply for Perkins funding, they take a lot of stock in what the advisory boards have to say because they want us teaching on the latest equipment. They want us to know what's going on in the business. Gone are the days of the hammers. Now it's all nail guns and everything else, so we have to have all that equipment. Any questions on upgrades to both tech areas? Okay. Item E is the school-wide technology committee. Uh, Mike Vieira is, is with us today. He's going to talk about the parent portal and password resets in a few minutes. But uh, Mike has agreed to co-chair uh, the technology committee with Paul Kitchen, who's our business manager. Uh, Bob and I have both put three uh, academic and vocational technical teachers on a committee of now eight. Uh, their mission is to chart a path forward for invigorating technology in the curriculum across our school. Uh, it's one of the areas that no, both Mr. Watt and myself feel as though we need we need to, to make strides in to get our to get our district at a, at a level in 21st century education and technology in all the classrooms. We're looking at things like access points in classrooms, one-to-one -one devices that have happened in many 
districts across uh, the Commonwealth. Uh, it's not going to happen in the next month or two, but we're in the process of trying to create a technology plan, an updated technology plan that's going to get us uh, on that course. On the highway, so we're providing a top-notch technology education to all students in here at Great and Bethel Book Tech. Questions where in the very, that I anticipate that will be an agenda item throughout most of our meetings mm -hmm. this year as the Tech Committee. I think that tomorrow, or they're going to begin their work tomorrow. Uh, so we'll, we'll provide regular updates throughout the year. Questions? Okay, item three, I we can talk about this a little bit too, connect ed and parent communication. One of the focal points in July that Mr. Watt and myself started to talk about was how can we better reach out to parents in the community. We updated our 10A forms this summer for incoming students to include cell phone numbers, email addresses, so that when robocalls and things of the like go out with school cancellations or information that parents need to know, if, if parents have provided us with more than their home phone number, cell phone numbers, email addresses, the robocall will be directed to all of those uh, communication services. Uh, in this day and age, you know, it's nice to have a robocall call that's sent to your home, but as people are working or they're out on the road, as, as information needs to get out, people have access to that stuff directly on their cellular devices. And we want to make sure that the communication we have with all parents uh, in diaries in our district is direct and as, as expedient as possible. And so we're kind of excited about that. We're, we're going to meet in the, in the coming weeks with the folks who are in charge of redirecting that uh, process for us. They took the first month of school to kind of input a lot of that data, as you can imagine, with 2,100 plus students and 10 a forms coming in. It's, it's quite a process to make sure that numbers are and emails and things are entered correctly. Uh, we don't have 15 or 20 people doing it. We literally have a person uh, whose charge it is is to make sure the data is in it. That way we can be accountable and ensure that, that information is being put in accurately. So we anticipate the next coming in a couple of weeks or so that process will be completed and we'll be prepared as, we, as the weather changes and things to, to implement a more robust, I call it, robocall system that reaches people in, in multiple modalities. And then that's another reason for the online application. Once you've inputted your own information, they will talk to each other and we'll just send it over there. So it'll be a quick, quick process. We won't have to go through the uh, hand putting all the things. So manually putting all the things. Any questions on the Connect Day? is our student information system. Um, has anyone used it here? So everything about the student's input is a follow aspect. The nice part about it is that there is a portal available for parents. There's actually a portal available for students, and I want to do that this year. But the, the family portal has been live for one year. Um, the student portal is not online yet. But for the family portal, everyone should have an account. Each parent, each person, the primary contact, the contact, they call it contact zero of the student, they should have an account. Um, the portal has been online for one year now. And I like it. I can uh, show you how to use it. Um, great thing about it too, if you set it up correctly, you see this I forgot my password here, yeah, I don't know if you guys can see that. If you, we give you a temporary pass, uh, we give you a permanent login ID and a temporary password. Once you log in for the first time, you're able to set up security questions so that if you ever forget your password, you don't even need IT to intervene and give you a, unlock you or give you a new password. So I'm logged in right now. And if you go up here, I'm logged in as Lisa Lima. I can set my preferences. And the third tab is the security tab. If I answer, if I put my primary email and I answer security questions and save it, 
if I ever forget my credentials, like my password, I, I can just click, I forgot my password, put my username, and answer those questions, and it'll email me the temporary password to get back on. Okay. So there are nice things about the portal. You can actually see that Lisa has two students here. And you can actually drill down and look at the student, look at their address, make sure it's correct. You can look at their academics, and there's, uh, these are, this is Alex's classes. And you can actually see his assignments. Right now he's got nothing in for automotive. You can look at their attendance. What's nice too about the system is you can go to previous years. So right now we're only on this year. If you see this little funnel right here, you can click all records. And you can go into 2000, last year, 2016. Um, If you ever forget your password, you can always call the school and ask for extension 342, or you can email aspen at gmbt.edu, and someone will get back to you within 24 to 48 hours. It's more than one person checking that email, so that way if you get locked out or forget your password, we'll get you back online. Do you have any questions? Thank you. one-to-one -one initiative, we can actually integrate Google Docs and stuff. The assignments can be put on to X2. The student can be at home with their laptop and do their assignments. It'll be more integrated and it'll be nice. Yeah. And we're working, just so folks that are here know, working as quickly as we can on that. It is, it is an initiative that's going to take some time. Uh, there's a lot of ways to equate it, but it, you know, the infrastructure has been the first step in that. We have to have the infrastructure there. Mike and the team in IT have done a terrific job this summer. I don't, you know, most of you don't know but the data center that we have been, been put in a location where we can start to drive that sort of super highway and get the, get the road in place, the infrastructure in place so that we can have all these access points and the devices. But we're, it's going to take some time to do it. And it's a large school too, yeah. so it's, it's not, yeah. it's 500,000 square feet. Yeah. So it's not a, a little endeavor. We have friends in New Hampshire who have the same system for their children and they use it for snow days. Yeah, right. Replace that day at school. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. So uh, the kids, if 50%, or 75% of the kids log on, yeah. and actually do the minimum requirements, then it doesn't count as a snow day. That's actually interesting. Yeah. I thought you meant for a communication yeah. thing, but yeah. no, I actually did the three day. Assignments from the teachers, and so the teachers stay home, the kids stay home, and everybody's happy. Yeah, the administration stays home too. Yeah. <laughs> well, they, you know, they have to address that a lot more than we do, so that's a good yes. thing. Oh. Yeah. Be interesting to see. It says, I think this is the technology continues to grow. That would put some, I mean, the state would obviously have to endorse some of those being counted as, as school days. Uh, maybe it's interesting to see how that plays out in time in Massachusetts as we go through that. But yeah, it'd be very interesting to see. Questions or comments about anything on the parent portal? Okay. Future meeting dates uh, are at this point scheduled for January 10th, 2017. March 7th, 2017, and May 2nd, 2017. We will follow up to make sure that 
all parents on the school council receive notification of those meetings going forward, and we'll certainly look into the issue later that you raised with Mr. Locke and I earlier. So, uh, in terms of making sure they receive it, you know, making sure those kinds of things happen. So, we'll move forward with that. Does anyone have any questions or comments or anything they'd like to share at this point? We can certainly, uh, we listed optional tour of the building, not sure how much time we have left in the hour of folks who are interested. No, not many, not many here, here, but certainly if you'd like a tour of any of the Korean technical areas, I'm, I'm, happy, to come by. I'm happy to do it. I think it's amazing to actually walk through the carpentry area and see how big it is, the automotive and all that. It's, uh, it's interesting, whether you do it at open house or not, but it's, you're welcome for a tour. Any comments, questions? I'd like to thank you all for coming. Thank Thanks you. for your time with us this afternoon. Thank you.